something comes to mind as I'm on my walk this morning, and it is the, some words that uh, were spoken by the great sage, uh, Sri Ramana Maharishi, and it, these words, they have stayed because they are so potent and point so powerfully to how true seeing happens. Uh, the sage said, the eye removes the eye, yet remains the eye. So of course, many people go, what is he talking about? How many eyes is there? Apart from the two, that's not the eyes he's talking about. When consciousness, when the pure, absolute God Self manifested this existence, the play of existence, and to experience it, it came in the form I am. By appearing in the form I am, the consciousness I am, it did not lose any portion of itself in its absoluteness, but it manifested. And it manifests also in a form. It needed a form in order to taste experiencing the diversity of the experience and of the all oh, the myriad of things that it created: the sky and earth, the heavens and the earth and the seas, and all the creatures and all the beings who roam about on the land, in the sea, and in the air. And the play of existence, the dance of existence. It also appeared inside the sentient or living beings, the conscious beings, in the form I am. Not the words saying I am, but the intuition, the natural sense, I am. This I is uh, I consciousness. Am means to exist. I am here. I am. It's quite impersonal. It's not personal. It's not the person. Just like the body is not a person. And it's not personal, okay? And this sense I am entered the body and uh, uh, experienced itself as the experiencer or the witness, the, 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 the feeling or vibration I am, I exist, okay? But as soon as it entered body, functioning in body, uh, the way of the world in order to manifest as individuality, the belief I am the body came. It developed uh, naturally also, but it also developed, uh, um, <coughs> supported by uh, collective uh, conditioning from family, from parent, from society, strengthens this feeling, I am the body. And this I am the body, I am the conditioning received inside this body as mind. And then the sense of person, the I became something personal. That was called birth of the person. Not the birth of the body, but the birth of the person. And the, the person is a mode of consciousness, a reduced component of consciousness that feels then, I am this person. And thereafter, we don't know how long this consciousness is sleeping or dreaming itself to be only person. So it's on much reduced power because it is infinite and broad. But it came to the person, and the person takes on the limitations of the body. Maybe we come out of the sun a bit, we walk a little bit here. Come, come. This personhood identity of consciousness, which, which is formed with the feeling, I am the body, became the basis of the personal existence. I am my mind, I am my conditioning, you see? Uh, so as soon as that came in, consciousness became very limited in its expression. Uh, so it became selfish, insecure, because it recognized that the body is subject to pain, suffering, mind and body, uh, also sickness, uh, death also. So the consciousness, which is actually imperishable because it is formless, uh, took on fear through the body identification. No? So, by coming to satsang and learning now, being shown the way of observing, witnessing Im impersonally, one begins to see. The seeing becomes self-evident. 
that the person and all of its characteristics and identity is actually uh, a thought based that has been strengthened through habit, you see, and uh, it's observable, and if it is observable, as all things which are observable, must be uh, accepted that they are not stable, they come and go. And if something comes and goes, it cannot be the reality. It's like the clouds, they are part of the sky, but they come and go, but the sky is always here. In the same way, thoughts and feelings, ideas and so on, they come and go. Everything's coming and going. Not only that, they are observed to come and go. So that which is observing their coming and going cannot be made of the same thing. Because if it was, first of all, it was here, that which is here, was here before the thoughts come. And it witnessed the thoughts coming and now present. It also witnesses them going. So if it was th those, then uh, it would also be gone. But it remains as the witness. And so it becomes increasingly clear that the witness is capable of witnessing even the sense of personhood and personality. And the recognition of that. <sighs> it's as though you've been imprisoned by a limited, limited consciousness. Consciousness, but limited consciousness. And now the field is opening in an immeasurable way. So then once we are freed, once we are freed from the cage of personhood, from the limitations, you see, not cursing personhood, it has its play, it has its purpose, had its time, but now time to expand into the fullness of yourself, you're coming into the place I am. So this is the original I am, you see? The I am removes, the I removes the I, so the I am removes the I person identity and again abides naturally in the I. So I removes I, yet remains I. So this is the uh, an explanation of what is meant by this seeming riddle. And experientially, this is uh, wonderful. Now you are experiencing yourself more as being. When you say I, most people when they speak I, there's very much a strong sense of I am this body, I am my person. The person is the background, it's like it is the ground of the sense of being. But as you come to see from the truth, you see, no, it's the beingness, is the background of the life, not just the body, mind, you see? They can still be there, and your functionings, that happened during the body-mind belief period, many of those are just what is destined to happen, but they were interpreted only from the limited perspective of personhood, and so they were not experienced in the full way. Now, as the I am, the broader field of consciousness, all those things, those things which were not true, will start to fall away more, and without fear, without sacrifice, they're simply going happily. And those that will stay are those that were from the beginning. They were right to be here for now. You see, now they are in service to the broader consciousness. That is the, the, the leap, the change from person to presence, from person to presence. And then from presence to complete purity. We will talk about that another time. Okay? The first step. The first great step of awakening, uh, other people may call it salvation, freedom, liberation, is the shift from person to presence. Person is very much, we know what person, how it behaves. Everybody's different and sometimes selfish or sometimes kind, sometimes this, sometimes that. The range of personhood is very, very wide. From the lowest, which is very aggressive and mean and, and you know, uh, afraid and insecure and um, judgmental and slanderous and quick to believe wrong things, that's the low end, to the person which is more pure minded and honest, open, kind, that's also within the range of personhood. But beyond this, in the space of I amness, there is equilibrium, there's harmony, 
there's not a somebody being that. It is just the being, being itself. And so in this space, uh, the, uh, the mind is more intuitive, more spontaneous is life, more free, more open, like this. That is the quality of beingness. That is the true human being, you can say. But beyond this, is absolute purity. And this I will uh, share with you. Uh, eat now what you have been served. For those of you who feel in your heart to follow this, you will see the fruit and taste the fruit of it. This very day it will begin, and begin continue to strengthen. Okay. <laughs>